spotlighting Hawaii's leaders. We want to bring in Governor David E. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Lieutenant Governor, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Mayor Derek Kawakami. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for being here. Spotlighting the issues. Where is the virus right now in our community? How much is this overall going to cost the state? How are you responding to the community's concerns? Talk about the level of citations that you guys are writing. Spotlight Hawaii with Yanji Denise and Ryan Kalei Suji on the digital platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Long's Drugs. Well, aloha. Thank you so much for joining us here on Spotlight Hawaii. I'm Yanji Denise, joined by Ryan Kalei Suji. Ryan, we have some very exciting things happening in the world of athletics over at the University of Hawaii. And so we have two very special guests today. Yeah, a lot happening on the lower campus this weekend. We want to bring in first uh, Athletics Director of the University of Hawaii, David Matlin, joining us once again. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Aloha. Aloha. Great to see you, Yanji and Ryan. Well, you know, David, big weekend coming up, the first football game uh, of the season. Uh, how are things feeling? How are things looking, gearing up for what is expected to be an exciting Saturday? You know, very excited. I mean, this is really going to be our first game at Clarence T.C. Ching without you know, Luma site, with, without, you know, all the protocols where we have concessions. Uh, and it's the beginning of the Timmy Chang era. So, you know, just really excited to watch the team who, who looks pretty locked in. I'm uh, really proud of the job the coaches have done and the support staff and getting ready. Tell us about the fan experience. What's it going to be like on Saturday and how's it going to be different from, you know, what we've experienced over the last two years? Yeah, well, I, I, like I said, the, we're going to it's going to be more like an event, you know, like a, a normal event where we have um, concessions. You can buy a beer at a football game, which we, which we couldn't do last year. Um, going to be, you know, obviously the game itself is going to be high energy. To, uh, the team's going to be high energy, great atmosphere with an awesome student section. You know, our students will be rocking. We're going to have a, the Keiki fun zone at Les Murakami. Bank of Hawaii is the sponsor of the game. Um, Malia by Outrigger is giving 3000 trading cards to the first 3000 fans of some team trading cards, which will be neat. And it's a, it's a green out. Uh, and we're having the green concert. Uh, you must have a ticket to go to the, the green concert at the Stan Sheriff Center, which starts at 2.30. Uh, so parking will start at 12.30. So uh, lots of activities. Um, it's going to be a, you know very festive and um, just kind of fired up for our, the first game of the Timmy Chang era. And really uh, what I would say is a kind of a more of an uh, official opening of the Clarence T.C. Chang football for on campus with, with um, kind of at full force. You know, we're going to talk to head coach Timmy Chang in just a little bit, but you mentioned – the Clarence C.C. Ching Complex, uh, and recently you went to the Board of Regents asking for more money to expand uh, the footprint of the stadium to allow for more seating. Uh, can you talk about the future plans for the complex as a whole and uh, the plans and the timeline moving forward? Yeah, well, obviously very grateful and excited for that opportunity. Uh, you know, the, the impact for our recruiting uh, to keep our fans engaged until the new stadium is built will be important to have more fans be able to attend for student athlete experience. Uh, and it, also this is, you know, part of this plan is uh, going to uh, do, do quite a bit for our women's track team as well as our soccer team. But the plans are uh, to get up to 17,000 uh, uh, fans uh, starting in January. Uh, they'll start adding the stands. A lot of it will be on the track. Uh, the, the first phase, will, will the goal is to have uh, by August to have the, um, the seat construction done. At the same time, they'll, they'll start working on um, the practice fields right now to, to put a new track there with a throwing area, a dedicated throwing area that we really don't have. Uh, we have to do makeshift right now. And uh, the intention is to um, you know, have to bring soccer to campus for, so they can play games there. Uh, we're going to move the uh, Eva grandstands here over to that soccer field, over to the field there, so they have about the 1,200 seats. That probably won't be done until 24-ish. And then there's a little more work that needs to be done with lights. Uh, but, uh, you know, excited about it, uh, grateful, um, you know, as just to have a, a great home for our team until we transition to the new stadium. Let's talk a little bit about that transition. We know that that project is really still it's in its infancy. How long do you think you'll have to play games, uh, football games on campus? When do you realistically expect to be able to he head over to Halava? You know, that's a, that's a, a great question. I, you know, I, I'm hearing right now it's more like 26, 27. Uh, obviously, um, if everything goes right, you know, maybe that could be exceeded. Uh, I, I'm a sooner the better. Um, but, uh, but I think realistically we'll, we'll, we'll be, we're going to be here, uh, at Clarence DC Ching for at least five years. 
And uh, so I think we're thinking 26, possibly 27. There are some who are calling for the complex on the lower campus to be the home comp co uh, complex permanently uh, and maybe not move to Aloha Stadium, more control over some of the other things that you can do within the confines of the lower campus. Uh, your thoughts about those who say that football should be played on campus permanently? Yeah, well, I appreciate that. I mean, there's, there's a lot of benefits to being on campus. Uh, I think it's great for student life. I do know that the, you know, the, the 400, the 350 plus $50 million that's allocated for the project is for Halava. So um, I'm not sure what the, what the art of the possible is, but, you know, I mean, you know, our, our job right now is to do the best job at Clarence TC Ching for our fan experience, for our student athletes, uh, to keep our program going and, and, and str you know, striving to get better each day. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a, the philosophy is, um, if, you know, right now the plan is to go to, Halava at some point, and if that's the plan, then sooner is probably better. But I, I get the the comments, and uh, you know, our our goal is just to be agile and adjust as we move forward. One of the big impacts of COVID was, of course, limiting the fan experience on campus, and that has a huge impact on the budget of the athletics department. Tell us a little bit about how the budget is looking, uh, and how playing on campus will impact things. Yeah, well, it makes a big difference. Um, last year, it's kind of like you have all the expense of running a stadium. Um, not, not all of it, but a, a high percentage, but without the, uh, without the revenues. I mean, we didn't have any fans for the first three games, um, nor, um, and the fourth game was limited. And then even for the fifth and sixth games, you couldn't really have people under 12 cause they weren't vaccinated because of our Lumicite um, guidelines. So this would obviously make a big difference for our budget, uh, as we're striving to balance our budget this year, I, this gives us a, an opportunity to, 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 to have that happen. So, um, you know, and, and, you know, a good thing about on campus now we'll have concessions. So there's some revenues there and it's just going to be a great opportunity for all of our corporate partners to um, that support us that are, are huge to our program by supporting us through sponsorship to um, really, um, you know, promote their messaging uh, and their support of the University of Hawaii Athletics Department. You know, you're coming off a really a banner year for the athletics program last season, both on and off the playing courts and fields. Uh, with the department as a whole, the University of Hawaii was in contention for the uh, Commissioner's Cup of the Big West. Uh, there was just a lot of great successful teams, of course, a national championship as well. Uh, talk about the success uh, of the overall department as a whole, again, both on and off and, and everything that the uh, athletic department has been able to accomplish last season. Yeah, th thanks for mentioning that. Um, I'm so proud of our, our student athletes, our coaches, our support staff. I mean, you talk about off the court academically. We had our 17th consecutive semester of student athletes over a GPA of 3.0. Uh, lots of um, all, you know all Americans, uh, Big West, all academics. Uh, Kanai Akana, as you know, Ryan uh, won the MVP Elite 90 award, which is an award that goes to the highest GPA uh, at an, all the national championships. We've been fortunate to win, I think, three of those in the last six years. Last year, arguably one of our best years, we had five Big West champions, eight Big West players of the year, four coaches of the year. Uh, Coach Amo, Beeman, uh, Wade, and uh, Silberstein, Evan, from Beach. Seven teams were inv invited to, you know, invited to play uh, in postseason. That includes our sailing team, and three individuals uh, went to the NCAs. Also, uh, away from our uh, to our support staff, our digital media team won the COSIDA Changemaker of the Year award uh, for really doing one of the best jobs in the country for social media. Uh, we we had a dedicate um, the crew over there. Um, they had during COVID, they they focus on how can we get better digital media wise. And there's something called skull, skull, skull sparse ranking where we were probably in the hundreds. Our goal was to get the top 25 in the month of May. We, we hit 12th in the country uh, and that that measures impressions on, I think, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Um, and we were the only one in the top 25 or top 12 that uh, was not a autonomous five or power five. So lots of it was it was a great year. And, you know, what are, what are student athletes and coaches do in the community? A lot of a lot of positive outreach. Uh, a lot of it doesn't get reported, but just being engaged. I, I tell our student athletes that uh, when I meet them, we're recruiting that playing at University of Hawaii is a unique opportunity, different than any place in the country, because you're not just playing for your team. You're not just playing for university. You're really playing for the whole state. And that's an incredible opportunity. But it's also a responsibility. Um, speaking of that responsibility, of course, we do have this game coming up this weekend, and you did mention that this is the start of the Coach Chang era. For folks who have not been introduced to the coach, how would you describe his his style, his leadership on and off the field? What have you seen in him, and what are you hoping the fans see in him this weekend? Well, you know, 
I'm so proud of the job Timmy's done. He, first of all, he's genuine. He wants to be here. He, he, he cares about this community. He, he loves this program. He's brought in uh, an incredible staff that are all engaged and buying in. And, and really, you know what Timmy is, in, in short, he's a difference maker and he's a leader and he's an educator. Um, and coaching is his form for that. Um, you know, you, you just feel the energy from him. And, 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 and frankly, he's done a phenomenal job in the community. Uh, which which was expected, uh, but he's you know exceeded uh, high expectations that I that I had. So proud of the job he's doing, and really just like the positivity and and um, you know it's he he he's done a great job at interacting with our other coaches and you know our our coaches as a whole they just seem really united right now and 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 that's that's critical. I mean at the end of the day uh, that's that's how you get that's how you get great. I want to just ask you about the overall changing in the landscape of college athletics and, and the dynamics of things that have really changed the overall feel and makeup. Uh, of course, the addition of NIL, uh, the transfer portal, you know, the, uh, athletics has had to evolve a lot within the past few years. Uh, how do you see some of these, the implementation of these um, things like NIL and transfer port portal impacting the student athletes at the University of Hawaii and moving forward, how you navigate through these changing times? Yeah, well, you think about the last two years, there's been COVID and there's been a transformation of, of, of the collegiate model. Um, there's also right now there's a transformation committee that the NCA is having, which will we'll probably see some more changes in January. You know, we have to be agile. You have to anticipate what you think is coming. I think name, image and likeness, that's a great opportunity for student athletes. I think it needs to be used in a proper manner, which is really not as a recruiting inducement. But I think it's an opportunity for them to um, to. Um, you know, use their images and 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 benefit from that, which I which I think is a great opportunity. I think in reality, I think the the NCA and the member institutions, we were a little slow at making some adjustments. So now it's kind of fast and furious. Uh, so I think this is positive, uh, but it is a different world. I mean, it, the um, going from the, the the amateur model we had to the new amateur model, which is obviously a little more professionalized, um, is something that's uh, going to be a challenge. And uh, you know, we just have to be agile and open-minded, uh, which, um, you know, so it's a, it's a new world. It's been, it's been a lot of change in the last few years um, with COVID and, and with the, the collegiate model. Well, let's stick with COVID for just a moment. I'm just interested to know there were so many restrictions on place on athletes um, in the last season, uh, especially when it came to travel and whatnot. What are the sort of protocols in place right now for student athletes? You know, is there testing before games? How, how are you working within, you know, because COVID is still, of course, in our community, uh, but a lot has changed in the last two years. Yeah, we, 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 we actually um, don't have testing. We have testing if, if, if something ha has symptoms. Um, what we call our student athletes to do is if they're if they're not feeling well, to stay home, reach out to your trainer, your doctor. Um, but right right now, we're not in a testing phase and, and no one really in the NCAA is except except if we feel someone has symptoms. Uh, we've been fortunate overall. Um, I mean, now more people seem to be getting the the normal flu also that that that's kind of back as we go back to society. But, um, you know, our, our protocols are, are just more common sense protocols. Uh, but. Um, you know, also for our games too. Uh, one last question before we let you go. It is a, another important year in the celebration of 50 years of Title IX. Of course, Title IX having strong roots here uh, to Hawaii with Patsy Mink, as well as to the University of Hawaii with Donna Thompson and the role that she played uh, at the University of Hawaii and helping the formation of Title IX. Uh, does the University of Hawaii have plans to celebrate uh, this 50th anniversary and uh, anything final that you have to share, share share with us this morning? Yeah, we'll have a lot of information coming out on that, but we're having a 50th anniversary gala, which Lois Mannon, our senior women administrator, is the point with uh, the chair of that. Uh, and the, the point person for that is uh, Nancy Wo, or, or the, the chair, and then also the uh, honorary chairperson is Carissa Moore for that. Um, it's um, you know it's going to be an exciting event. They're, we're also going to honor um, have a at a, I think the mid October football game a salute to Title IX. Uh, they're going to do some workshops for some um, uh, young women, um, it's, um, probably under high school aged, uh, with, where some women leaders will talk to them and, and more to come. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's in our DNA, Patsy Mink, um, you know, what, what that's done for society in general in, in the United States of America is huge. And Hawaii is kind of at the forefront of it. So we're, we're going to celebrate it and kind of proud of the job that our, our, our team has done and Lois and, and, her, uh, and, and the group that are, are supporting her. So many great volunteers, um, with Nancy Woe being the, the lead of that. Um, it's, it's exciting. 
Wonderful things happening at the University of Hawaii. UH Athletics Director Dave Matlin, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Aloha. And now we are heading over to speak with Coach Timmy Chang, fresh off the field from uh, tra from practice. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. So big game uh, this weekend, of course. How are you feeling heading into your first big game uh, as head coach? Uh, excited. You know, um, I really just want to see how our guys are going to perform when the lights are on um, and and really get to see the community come out and, and have, you know, have a, a have a great energy and buzz here on campus. Um, I think that's exciting. You know, I I've, I've been around the, the University of Hawaii campus for a long time, going back to, you know, when it was called Cookfield. And, uh, you know, I was ball boying games for my, my father when he was an official. And, you know, there there wasn't the University of Hawaii playing here at the time. And so it's it's pretty exciting to know that, you know, campus, you know, as you know, is buzzing with the first day of classes on Monday and, and everybody back in into full swing of things. And, and we just get to play this uh, this game called football and, um, and we get to share that with our students. We get to share that with our university and we get to share it with our community. So um, I'm, I'm excited. What do you think has been one of the biggest challenges for you taking on this role as head coach, stepping into this? What have you learned and, and what are some of the things that you've had to overcome being in this position for the first time? You know, I think I think uh, when I was going through the community, going out in the community and meeting a lot of people and and building, and building the groundswell of support. Um, there's about three or four people that said it's like you're drinking out of a fire hose right now. And so I've, I've heard that. I've heard that phrase a couple of times. But. But really, um, you know, for me, it, it was just about just just taking one task at a time, right, and trying to build on a bunch of things. Um, and 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 really, I I I break it down to like five, you know, to like five segments of of what I try to focus on. One's my guys, my roster. You know, two is the recruiting. Uh, three is development on and off the field. Life after football is huge for me. It's a huge selling point because it leads it leads into recruiting. Um, you know, marketing and branding our team, getting out to all eight islands, however possible, getting to the youth, making people sure, making sure that, you know, if people stay home and we can only fit so many people in, in our stadium as of now, um, you know, that they're watching on TV, that they feel part and, and they know the story of our players and our university and, and not just our sport, every sport. And then fundraising, of course, and, and trying to get our kids what they need, trying to get my coaching staff the things that they need for us to be a top tier program. And so, you know, I just kind of focus on those things and, and make choices every day that lead to building on those things. And, and, and really that to me, it's, I just try to keep it as simple as possible. There was a great article in the paper yesterday about the players that you've chosen as your team captains. Share more about the leadership of this team and the players you've assigned to those roles. You know, it's it, it's a it's an honor to be a team captain of a, of a team and especially a, a Division One FBS, you know, program. Um, it's, it's a great honor because it's, it's for us, it's voted on by your peers. And so your body of work and what you brought here since January, since we got, when, since we, be, when we got together and we said, this is the standard of what our program is going to be. And this is the foundation we're going to build our program on. You know, these four guys are there. They exemplify what we want in that locker room and what we want taking the field. And, and, and they're, and then they're alpha dogs, you know, they're the guys that, you know, when, when they talk, people listen. When they when they say something, they follow. And uh, and they just don't lead by, you know, their words. They lead by example every day. And, um, you know, they're going to have some bad days. But at, 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 at the most part, you know, these guys, you know, there's a, a 115 other guys watching what they do and are willing to go into battle with those guys. And so um, I'm very proud of them. You know, it's it again, it's, a, you know, first for everything, right? I'm a first-time head coach, first game I'm coaching. It's my first, my first group. My first team captains, I mean, it's, it's just exciting. There's a lot of also excitement and interest in the type of offense that you are putting together for your program. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say the level of familiarity is right now amongst your team of this new offense that you've assembled? Uh, are you pleased with the progress that they've made? And what can fans expect to see uh, with this Timmy Chang style offense? I, I think, um, you know, for me, um, I hired a great offensive coordinator and, and, a, and a great staff on offense and both defense. Um, but I think what they're going to expect is, is as a, an offense that's not boxed in into ideas. Uh, you know, they're going to put the stress on, on defenses. 
um, you know, a hundred yards, a hundred yards long and 53 and a quarter. Uh, is it 53 and a quarter? I hope I'm, I hope I'm correct. I'm damn head coach, right? Should be correct. <laughs> Four and a quarter um, on the third. But uh, we're going to put the stress on defenses. And, you know, they're going to have to cover all our guys all over the field and every single gap. And they're going to have to do it in, in a fast paced level. And so um, I'm, I'm really excited about this offense and, uh, and what it can do. And, and, and hopefully we put up a lot of points. You know, these student athletes have been through so much over the last few years with COVID and all of the restrictions. There's a preparation, of course, on the physical side, but I would imagine that there's also a mental preparation that goes into this experience. You know, you didn't know that you're, it's the first game and the first team and, mm-hmm. and all the things that all the first that you just outlined. But talk about how you are helping these players to prepare on a, on a mental level for this game and, and coming out in front of these fans. That's a great that's a great question. And, and really, I would flip it. I, I tell them the game and, and the preparation and, and what you're doing is 90 percent mental and 10 percent physical because they the reason why they're here sitting in, in the room and the locker room and they're on, and their student athletes on our university campus, whether it's football or any other sport, is because they have God given talent. And, and that's why they're sitting here. They were the best of what we could find. And, and Hawaii is kind of unique because it's like through the world. Right. You got guys from all over the place. And that's what makes us special in this melting pot that we created here in our culture. But, you know, the, the mental part of it is where they get their edge. You know, it's what is the consistency of making great choices every day, you know, their time management um, and, and trying to slow the game down and develop a different edge as far as, you know, their work ethic and, and understanding what's happening before it happens. Always trying to be two steps ahead. And so um, the game's so mental at this level and, and these kids, they go through, so many different things, you know, for the first time at an 18 to 22 year old stage that these things are hitting them. You know, some of them are making away from family for 2000, 5000, 10,000 miles away. You know, they're making decisions for the first time in their life. And, uh, you know, you just you just try to help and guide them to make great decisions and just be there for them. You're trying to be that 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 figure that, you know, that they held that they they keep they were grown with. You know, whether it was, you know, mom, dad, uh, uncle, brother, auntie, you know, you try to mimic that as best as you can. And and, and what really helps myself as a coach is, um, you know, never forgetting, you know, sitting in their shoes when I was 18 to 22 year old. So I can relate to them and, and, and talk to them through my experiences and ups and failures and, and good stuff. You know, we're going to see a lot of new faces for this roster and, and hit the field for the first time. Uh, and, and you've had the opportunity now for the past few weeks to get to know these players, these styles. Is there anyone out there that has surprised you? Maybe a player to watch that fans maybe uh, are not on their radar, but someone that's impressed the coaching staff that is going to be maybe this player that we should be looking out for this season. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a, we have a few good ones, uh, you know, offensively, just off the top of my head, uh, you know, Zion Bowens is, is our is our top receiver um, on the team. Um, you know, he's our alpha male in that room. And, um, you know, he, he might have took a back step to a couple guys, you know, the, the years prior. But, you know, this is his time to, to show what he can do. Um, you know, our tight end, Jordan Murray, I think, is, uh, is a really good player. Um, you know, he, he came from us and was recruited by the, the last staff. And I'm so glad that he's here with us. And he only has one more year left. But I, I, I think he's a special talent that we need to watch. Um, one of our captains, Dietrich Parsons. He he's really good at the running back position. Um, I stand behind the, the stand behind the play, um, you know, probably about 75 percent of the day. And the things that he does with the ball in his hands, you know, you can't teach. Um, you know, we have a great offensive line that that's uh, spearheaded by the, the center who was voted on as captain. And um, and they and they bring in the most um, depth and um experience left on our offense and then quarterback you know we're, we're, we're gonna see who plays on saturday um defensively you know we got a couple guys in our in our linebacker room um you know headed by coach chris brown um and, and uh in Pinay. um our defensive line looks a little bit different uh, we definitely went to the well there and recruiting and uh cr- and adding in a lot of depth there and, and i'm very pleased on how we recruited in that position and then you know on the back end you're just gonna you're gonna see some new guys you're gonna see some familiar faces and uh and, and they're gonna be ball hawks they're gonna go try to get that ball for us and create more possessions 
I want to uh, share a few comments here from some fans. Patty Parker saying, this is so awesome for the kids and the community. Melissa saying, I love the energy, the players and coach of the players and the coaches on the field. Can't wait for Saturday. Go Warriors. Talk about your relationship with the community. I mean, of course, we focused a lot on the team, but um, this is such an important team for the entire state. So talk about that relationship. Well, I thought it was important to hire good staff so I could uh, go out to the community as well as with my coaches and, and, and really get out there and try to build, you know, I call it the groundswell, the foundation, the support, because, you know, we're, we're better. What got me to stay home as the top recruit, you know, coming out in, in 2000, um, you know, I had a chance to go to a lot of different places, a lot of different big schools. And, you know, I stayed home because I seen the, the two teams before go 0 and 18, my, combination of my sophomore high school year and my junior high school year and when I turned into a senior I got I got tickets to come to the game and watch June Jones's first year and you know they took a butt whooping from USC but slowly after that they kept winning and winning and winning and winning and I and I saw an empty stands turn into a 40,000 plus you know full stadium at at Aloha Stadium um, you know, in the last games of the season. And what I saw was I really saw the state rally. I, was, I really saw how people and the community backed the university program. And so for me, when I saw that, I was like, wow, I'm going to stay home and I'm going to play for the home state because, you know, you know, I looked at a couple of different things as an 18 year. I was like, well, I want to raise my family here one day. You know, I didn't know how my journey was going to go, but, you know, I see, I, I came back here 22 years later, you know, it, it, it I'm, I'm here, you know, I get a chance to raise my family here. And so um, the combination of those things happening is like, well, when I get this opportunity and this job, um, I want to make sure that the community knows that we love them. We're playing for them. And I want these kids to know in the locker room that you are putting the back on your state. Cause that's how I felt. I felt like when I played the back, I put the state on my back and I wanted to represent the state in the, the best possible light and the highest level possible every single week and everything that we did. So that's how I treat, that's how I treat the kids. And, um, and, and I want the, I want the community to be a part of this program. I want the community to own this university and be proud of it. I want to see more H hats and H shirts and, and, and driving, you know, wherever I'm going on the Island, I, I do see it and, it and it makes me proud. And, um, and, and we want to reciprocate that and, and know that, Hey, um, our kids are here for, for this state and, and they're, they're representing the state. Well, before we let you go, of course, Saturday, a big day uh, going up against Vanderbilt. What can you tell us uh, about their, you know, this team that you're going up against? This is the first time. And when you play the first game of the season, you don't have a lot to go off of. There's no film. There's, uh, you know, some new things mm -hmm. that probably have been implemented, but you're kind of going in there somewhat blind and they will be the same for you folks as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you tackling this Vanderbilt team? And, and what are some of the things that you think that you'll need to do in order to come out with the W? You know, um, in the simplest form, right? It's 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 your eleven guys on the field at that time, trying to trying to work in unison to to reach a goal for that one play, and then you got to do it over again in the next play, and then the next play, and the next play, and really, football is a sport where your fundamentals and your details are 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 tested every play in and play on, and 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 you know the thing that um. You know, the thing that we 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 know about Vanderbilt is that they're well coached. You know, they're an SEC team. You know, they're going to have great, great talent on on, on that side of on, on, on that side of the field. Um, and, and they're they're going to be hungry to want to win. And so um, we got to do the same. You know, we got to match the intensity. We got to, you know, play together. We got to do our job. And as and as and as simple as that sounds, you know, you know, trying to get our 18 to 22 year olds to, to understand where their mind's at at the time and, and just do their job. And, and, and it's really the guys, the guys that win games um, consistently are, are the most consistent ones that are doing their jobs together over and over and over and over again. So um, it's going to be a tough challenge. You know, I know they're, they're, they want to win. Um, uh, you know, they, if, as a first year head coach, uh, you know, he went two and 10 and, and, and I know that, you know, there's a lot of learning curve and I, I we expect them to be a lot better. And, and, you know, we're, we are, we are the first year guys on the block. And so, 
you know, for us, there's a lot of unknown, you know, there's a lot of unknown with, with, with our, with our team, what our guys are going to do, but that's what makes it exciting, you know, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to is just the challenge and, and our guys just getting that experience and, and, and going out there and playing their hearts out and, and then having a whole bunch of fans here um, with all the things that are going on. And they're going to have, a, they're going to have a blast. All right, Timmy Chang, head coach of the Warrior football team. Thanks so much for joining us this morning and uh, good luck on Saturday. We hope to see more of you, of course, uh, in the community as the season goes on. But best of luck to you the rest of the season. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Hello. Thank you so much. His passion is palpable, Ryan. What a wonderful way to start our, or to spend part of our week with him this morning. Uh, and of course, Dave Matlin as well, hearing about the exciting things happening on campus. Uh, of course, all eyes on Saturday. And you heard him talk really a lot about the heart of this team and how much he's trying to instill, uh, not only in the physical, but the mental game of his players. He's saying that, you know, these guys are carrying the weight of the state on their back. They recognize that. And uh, he really emphasized the relationship between the community and the players and talking about how excited he is for this weekend's game yeah a lot of firsts uh, you heard him say the first time that he's going to be on the field the first time his, he has team captains uh, a lot of firsts that will be happening of course for timmy chang uh, you notice though as we kind of talked a little about the x and o's he hasn't really revealed who the quarterback will be he said we'll just have to see who takes that position that is one thing that many people are eagerly anticipating to see who takes over the reins of Chevin Cordero in that position of quarterback, uh, but also what this Hawaii offense looks like. He kind of gave a brief description of how they're going to be uh, set up and really challenging the defenses of the opponents that they will be playing. Uh, of course, this will be the first time that they will be hitting the field. Uh, and so there will be a lot of unknown. So he said a lot of it will just be his players working in unison with each other, taking it play by play as they learned about Vanderbilt as they play. But sounds like a, a lot of exciting times. We also had the opportunity, of course, to speak to Dave Matlin about the plans that are happening. Uh, there is a lot of excitement, of course, playing back on campus again this season. The biggest difference is that the COVID restrictions are gone and there will be a lot more opportunities for the fans to interact with each other, but also to engage in the activities that are happening in and around the stadium. Yeah, we know people are so excited on a broader level. Of course, the University of Hawaii Board of Regents recently approving a thirty million dollar plan that ex, you know it will expand the Clarence T. C. Ching Athletics Complex to nearly seventeen thousand uh, in time for the start of the twenty twenty three football season uh you know we did ask him about whether they should be playing on campus permanently he said that you know he would love to play at halava as soon as possible but he does understand that that is part of the conversation that's happening right now so so many good things happening there and of course we are looking forward to saturday yeah and uh, looking forward also to our next conversation on friday we'll be catching up with the department of health director dr libby char to talk about all the things that are happening in our community of course COVID 19 continues uh, to be something that many in the community are being impacted by, as well as the update on what's happening with monkeypox uh, and a few other things that we uh, are going to follow up with, in including conversations that we had with former director Bruce Anderson and his calls for more funding for the department and ways in which the department can better serve the community. A lot to discuss always with Dr. Chai that we're looking forward to having that conversation with her on Friday. We thank you for joining us here for Spotlight Hawaii on this Wednesday morning. We'll see you right back here on Friday at 1030. Aloha. Aloha. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Long's Drugs.